you've been expressing your concerns and saying, Dusty, how's our cow doing? We got more problems. That's Ponderosa. It's a question. What do you do with this? And I don't want to make her suffer through that again. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. We are at Mom and Kevin's, the original place. You can always see and tell from the original place where it all started for us with the blue silos. So if you just joined us, you can go way back and watch some old videos where it all started in 2019. Right here, started filming in 2019, but started raising bison here in 2018. Place is on the east side of Sulphur. Uh, the Ponderosa or the ranch is on the west side of Sulphur, about 20 minutes apart. But we're here. You guys have been asking lots of questions and you've been expressing your concerns and saying, Dusty, How's our cow doing? And I deeply appreciate the concern and all of the questions about our cow. So I know you guys have been worried about her and uh, wanting to know how she's doing uh, since I did attempt to pull a dead calf out of her. Well, here she is, guys. You can see right here, she's uh, hanging up right up here, not far from the house in one of our uh, nice long pins here. She's getting uh, cubes every day. She gets hay. She's getting fresh water. She's getting taken care of. Let's just say that. She's kind of living the Eleanor life, if you want to say that too. Uh, she's doing pretty well. So we've got her pinned up here. Um, and the reason why we have her pinned up here is because uh, this is the area if we need to catch her, we can catch her and work her. And what I say by that is since we've talked last and I've given you an update on our cow here, she's received a bolus. It's a pill that uh, goes inside their birth cavity, kind of makes them uh, flush them, hopefully. Uh, so if you're just now joining us, what happened to this Texas cow is I saw some tissue coming from her. I knew she was getting close to, to uh, calving and um, I saw some tissue hanging out of her one day. Uh, the next day she had some more. And from my experience, and Marissa's as well, I wasn't sure what this tissue was, okay? I knew it wasn't pre-birth. I knew that she was gonna have a calf soon, but I didn't know, uh, I didn't think it was pre-birth. So that was the first or second day I saw the tissue. The next day we saw a hoof. And as soon as I saw a hoof, I'll call Gerald Parsons, my vet up in Stratford, um not very far from us he's the guy i call for everything called him and i said doc here's the situation and he said you got to get it out of her there's a dead calf in there and you got to get it out of her as soon as you can so what i did was organize the plan wanted to be by myself pulled out in the pasture and she was the first one to me this cow just through this whole process of what she's been through she told me she was sick it was kind of one of those things. She was the first one to me. She followed me up to the corral with cubes. I use cubes. Cubes helped. It br brought her up. And then from there, uh, I was able to get her in our catch pen, um, get Big Joe out because he came with her. He was worried about her. And he wanted some cubes too. And then from there, whenever Big Joe got out, I was able to run her down our alley and load out and i brought her over here to our place uh to the original place here because we have a handling facility here with a manual squeeze chute where i could marissa and i could put her in the manual squeeze chute and we could attempt to pull out anything that we could out of this mama now we didn't know the severity of it we knew that there was a dead calf in there by what was hanging out of her obviously but if we'd have known that from the little bitty tissue from day one, from my experience and what I've been through and what I've seen here dealing with this cow and, and trying to take care of her, that calf had been dead inside of her for a while. And I know a lot of people uh, question me and, and ask me, you know, why couldn't you avoid this and stuff? And she had had that dead calf for a while. And I know that because what I pulled out of her Let's just say it wasn't pleasant. And we didn't see the first signs until we saw some tissue coming from her and then a hoof. 
And then I called the vet and we quickly reacted after that. So we gave her some antibiotics. We gave her like 22 cc's of antibiotics that day. Kevin and I have since then brought her back in uh, about a week after that. We brought her back in. We gave her more antibiotics. Then we, uh, we gave her bolus as well. So she's been taken care of. We've done everything we've could, right? And we, I pulled out as much as I could. And I didn't have much success with that because... It just wasn't a pleasant thing, and there wasn't much I could do. As I, guys, I could I reached as far as I could to get what I could out of this cow. And uh, you know, some people don't understand that this is this is a bison. This is an American bison. At one time, before all this, she weighed 1,200 pounds, guys. She can move faster than me. She can jump higher than me. She can spin faster than me. And she can hurt me with those uh, gnarly horns that she's got on her head. And so it's not a smooth cakewalk when you work these animals. And now I got lucky with her because she came to me. She was, knew she was sick. She knew something was wrong. She knew she needed help from me. And so we got lucky with that. She was really good in the squeeze chute. She held still for us. But now it's just uh, what do we do with her now? That's the question. She's doing okay. Her Her... Her weight is stable, but our concern is, and this is coming from my vet as well, from Gerald, is there's probably been some damage in that birthing cavity of her. There still may be parts of that calf in her, guys. And uh, I know some of you are going, well, sur do surgery, get it out of her, reach in there. You can't. The, the, that birthing cavity has closed now. And um, now it's a... Uh, it's a question. What do you do with this cow now? Because she may come in heat. But we're not just going to let her go back out with Big Joe at the Ponderosa or Dunbar. We can't do that. One thing I'm worried about is if she gets pregnant again, are we going to go through the same issue? That's a question that we need to ask each other. Is that the right thing to do with one cow? This is one cow, right? This happens in cattle, sheep, goats, horses, you name it. And you guys have been through this experience. I've had a lot of good comments about it um, from your from you being a, doing something like this. But guys, now it's a question of what do we do with her? Because I'm afraid that if she does come in heat and she does get pregnant, we could be going through this again. And I don't want to make her suffer through that again for for what she went through. I don't want to go through that again. And um, so there may be damage done, according to the vet. I don't want to go through that again. And I don't want to make her go through that again. So we need to ask ourselves what we're going to do with this cow. The next step for her, we don't know. But what I do know is that we're still lucky to have this cow today. Because Doc told me after I pulled what I could out of her, he said that there was a good chance that she was going to die. So the fact that she's still standing here today is a crazy miracle. We're uh, going to keep her here for a little while. And... Uh, make sure she's doing okay and make sure, we're going to try to see if we can get her some weight back with a 14 percent cattle cubes and some hay we're going to see if we can get that back on her and making sure that um that she's gonna try to get on the gains and then we'll decide from there you guys let us know what you think so in the meantime we gotta head over to the ponderosa got some work to do i'm gonna meet uh, marissa cole and my little summer hand i've had this summer named eli um, we're gonna do a little fun project over there because we got more problems um, at the Ponderosa. I had a flood about a month ago and it hasn't rained since, so it's getting very hot and dry here and no grass left, uh, no regrowth, but. Uh... Got a little hair pick, Dunbar. All right, guys, we are down here at the creek crossing. So this is the area right over here where Cole, Eli, and Marissa are hanging out. This is the area where, <laughs> when we let the hoss herd out uh, at the time, this is where they got out at, right here at this creek crossing. And then what we did was we came back and we patched it up 
literally patch job. We used uh, some panel to come across here and uh, get everything taken care of. We had it up a little bit uh, out of the water, but just to get the bison on the burn unit and start to graze our grazing plan. Well, um, here recently we had a six inch downpour in our region uh, in like five, six hours. And it came hard and fast and for a long time, which was awesome. Very, very lucky to have that much rain. But when you get all that rain at once, it can cause some problems. And this is where the fence is now. It's, uh, it's in the creek. You guys see the panel right there? Those panels all strung across there up to where they were was right here. So we're going to save these panels because they're in still halfway good condition, maybe a little bent in some places, but what we're going to do is we're going to set this brush pile on fire. And one of my favorite things, we've got some diesel, we've got some help. It shouldn't harm those cow panels at all. And then we'll, after it burns off, we'll pull all the cow panels back out and we're going to start over. I know we need a full time thing right here and we've been drawing up some plans for that. Uh, we need a permanent crossing right here, fence crossing. And we've got some really good ideas on that. So there is going to be a permanent crossing here, a fence. But right now, uh, the bison aren't in here, <laughs> obviously. Uh, but, um, they, uh, they will be in here again at some point. And so we got to get this cleaned up and do have to put a fence back across this Creek and, uh, unfortunate thing, but we are happy for the rain. So if this is what we have to deal with, then we'll have to deal with, and hopefully in the future with our permanent crossing that we're going to construct, uh, we won't have any major issues like this. So let's get to burning. Yeah, you should just be able to throw it on there. Yeah, cool. mm -hmm. There you go. We got some. And then one more over here. Hi, I was just calling to notify I'm doing a little brush pile burn down in the creek. Kickstall Trail. Davis. Thank you. Bye bye. So, anytime that we burn, I like to call Sulphur and Murray County, just to, or Davis and Murray County Dispatch, and let them know that we're burning because in the past I've burnt places. And not that it's got out or anything, but just basically when you burn, people see the smoke and we're in a dry time right now. Um, they'll call the fire department and the fire department essentially has to respond. So I give them a heads up. If somebody does call and report that they see smoke somewhere, you know, on our ranch or something, they, the fire department knows that um, we're burning. So it's people just good people see smoke they want to help out so they'll call the fire department and report they see smoke somewhere and so that's all they call to prevent it you're supposed to call anyways they like for you to call
Even though we had a flood about a month ago, it is already hot and dry. We have not had any rainfall since we had the flood. It's starting to feel like the past two summers again. We are back to drought conditions here in Southern Oklahoma. So even though we are burning brush piles, we still have to be very preventive and make sure that debris can get to the grass and spark a new fire, which is what we don't want is a pasture fire. So what we're doing here uh, with Cole and Eli is we're taking all of the debris on the outside of the fire and shoving it back in and we're wetting around the fire. So just in case um, anything wants to get out, we're gonna go ahead and dampen it so nothing does get outside of the burn before we leave. These are some old brush piles that we pushed up when we built a new fence, which is next to the burn unit we uh, pushed this timber and stacked it up and just never had time to burn it and because we were burning the debris that was logged up in the creek we thought we'd go ahead and burn some other brush as well and since i went ahead and borrowed my uncle's tractor which had a brush hog on it and so i'm brush hogging around this area because here in the future i'm going to do a spot burn on this area so that we can start to recoup this area and let it restore it back to its native grassland which is what we want to do on this entire property for our bison this area in pasture three that i had sprayed last year that was covered in blackberries so many blackberries and as you can see from an aerial view how many acres of blackberries and hackberries and other type of brush has grown up in this corner which basically consumes the grazing side of things for the bison it takes so much grazing away from the bison and what we have to do is get rid of these woody plants invasive woody plants that can take over your pasture without any management and so we're trying to really diminish the blackberry bushes in almost all the areas of the Ponderosa. Not all, we are saving some, but in most places of the Ponderosa, we're trying to get rid of the blackberry bushes that will take over so quickly. at my shoes. You don't want what's in there. Your scratches. And that hen's roosting, so 